Greetings, Airbase Hellions. Uh, not done one of these for a bit, so we're going to have a bit of a kit review today. And we are going to be looking at the rather splendid new uh, Zvezda Yak 130 with a NATO reporter name of Mitten. I'm starting to use some sort of cute names these days, rather than the uh, slightly disparaging ones of the past. But uh, yes, but yes, this is what we're looking at. This is the one that's just recently been released with the new parts. So this is the bomber version that I'm going to be doing. So without further ado, we shall turn and have a look at the box. So here is our box, some rather impressive box art on depicting the uh, little 130 in this new eggplant grey scheme, which I uh, rather like, um, and that's probably the one that I will be doing it in. Uh, as you can see, side of the box we've got here, we've already got kit number 4818, all your colour callouts, which are as normal in Zvezda and Tamiya. Uh, example of the decal sheet, we'll come to that later. And the size of it, 148, 339 parts, and it's 24 and a half centimetres long. I often wonder why they never show you the uh, wingspan on Shvesda. On the other side of the box, it's just showing off a couple of others. So the 148th Hind, 148th uh, Felon, the SU-57, and the ground attack version of the Yak-130. Okay. Quick look at the instructions. These are actually, I've actually had a look at these and they're quite... Uh, so you've got your normal sprue callouts, and then we're starting off building the what looks like this plate that carries the control stick and the pedals, bulkheads. Then you're building the seat. Um, looking at the seats, they uh, look quite uh, good and quite a few parts for them, so that's generally bodes well. Um, wheel bay, nose wheel bay, that's all based on the underside of this, as you can see, more parts of the seat. Etc. Etc. Et and then you're into building things like the intakes, um, through intakes on these, which is quite nice. A um, few people have said that this looks uh, as if it's been maybe over designed by Javesda. I don't know. I quite like a challenge anyhow, so it doesn't really bother me. Um, you see all the other parts going, the usual stuff. You know what instructions are like, what you get with instructions, don't you? If you don't, you've obviously never built a kit. Or you try building one blind, which is not the best idea. And there we go. And then just on the back there, you've got the colouring parts for this two actually rather nice little uh, pilot's figures. I will not be using them myself. Um, and then you've got your stencil data for your weapons and the aircraft. And believe me, there's quite a few weapons with this one. So that's the instructions. Here is your decal sheet, which looks really nice colour. If you've used Vesda decals before, my tip, make sure it's a gloss surface and don't use microsets or decal setting solution. They don't seem to need it if it's a nice gloss surface. Um, and if you use a decal setting, they will literally just stick to wherever you put them. And if you need to manoeuvre them, it's an absolute pig. So just water to put them on. Once you've got them into place, then you can put some microsol or similar over the top. And uh, yep, have a quick close up of these. Quite nice if I put it the right way up. So nice in register, quite clear as well, which is good. And your colour callouts. So this is Russian one at the training unit at Kubinka, another one which is based at uh, Borisoglebsk air uh, field. And then these are the two more other unusual ones on the back. You've got one from the Laos Air Force um, at the top. Yep, that is a country. And the second one below the grey and the green is from Bangladesh. So you've got some interesting little variations on here, which is nice, rather than the usual, you know, bog standard stuff. But as I say, I like the eggplant grey, so I'm going to be going with the Borosogelsk, Glebsk, whatever, however you want to pronounce it version. So this sprue here, you have two of these sprues. It's got parts for the engines and the exhausts on here, a fuel tank or some kind of guided bomb pylons, all the bits that I don't know quite what they are yet, and the seat, which looks very plain on the sides. I have to say, and the seat itself there is quite plain. However, that makes sense because the seat belts are like a, an insert that sits in there. And if you want to put the pilots in, they will be in the way. So the pilots already got moulded on. So that's not a bad idea there. You can see plenty of other bits. All looks very nice. Nice little rivet detail on these. It's just been picked up. 
which is good. And I say there's two identical sprues, these two seats, two of everything else, so there you are on there. This is your one with the rather nice little pilots figures on. As you can see, it focuses, the pilots are quite nicely done. You've got all the seat belts and the oxygen tubes and everything already on. These are looking like flat actuators here, which is quite nice because it looks like you can do it in the dropped state, which is nice. Wheel hubs, another nice, makes painting them easy. They're quite nicely detailed, to be fair. Another one of your little blokes and some little wing fences or pylons there. So this is one of two identical weapons. Ones look like some big, you know, standard dropped out bombs. And uh, what looks like a pretty large guided bomb of some description. Um, this fellow in the middle. Again, there are two of these. Again, we could just pick up some nice detail and a little bit of rivet detail and stuff. So, yeah, these are very nice indeed so far. And uh, you got these little missiles. Now, these look identical, but it, this one seems to be made of a different plastic to this one. You can see the sort of like some mottling almost on this. It's a bit strange. It's a slightly darker colour, so I don't know quite what that's all about, but they all look good. Also, it's probably just one of those little things. Um, but as long as it doesn't affect with the build, I'm not really bothered. But there you go. Just want to keep your eyes open for. Big sprue. Various parts and things like for this on here. So there's parts for the cockpit here, like the cockpit bulkheads, horizontal surfaces. You've got your control panels over here, air brake. I think these are probably part of the undercarriage. These are the fuselage uh, cockpit sides, I believe. There's these bits here that have got vents and such. I mean, you can see the detail on this is actually rather splendid. Your wires in. You've got your rivets and such there, some more wiring and points. Bulkhead's nice. These are the two little pans where your control stick and your pedals go. Again, these I think on the nose wheel, part of the nose wheel, and you see very, very nice bit of detail on there. Landing gear, seems more than looks more than adequate. Looks like it'll do the trick. Could possibly detail it up with them, some uh, wire or something, but do the research if you're going to do that. This is part of the HUD display, the head-up display. There's two transparent pieces to go on it, but I quite like this raised bits on here. That looks quite nice. That should show up quite nicely with a, I assume that'll be painted matte black. And just a little dry brush over with a metallic colour. It should look quite splendid. But that's a, a nice old sprue there. Okay, another big sprue here. As you can see, we've got the cockpit well itself there. I'll have a close look at that there. Some doors or something some description first stage fans compress the fans quite nice all the various parts look again these look like they're probably going to be at the rear end with the exhausts are going to go there's part of the intake system another part there don't know what that's going to be until i've uh, had a proper mooch through and some like little jammer pods or something and this is the sort of main part of the intake area which looks quite uh, impressive Go over the seat. There you go. That's quite nice. Don't forget, this is quite a state-of-the-art um, fly-by-wire and glass cockpit type aircraft, so you're not going to have all the usual Soviet lumps and bumps and dials and God knows what everywhere. But uh, so far, so good. Liking the look of this. Finally, the big sprue with the big pieces on. So I think it's fairly obvious what these are. This is like the upper four or mid fuselage I would say and wings here's your forward fuselage here and here again I focus again some quite nice recessed and raised riveting on there which is rather nice and here's your rear fuselage again very nice detail on that look at this one here assuming this is part of the underside Oh, very nice. Flip it over, see what the other side's like. One thing I'm not noticing is any kind of sink marks on the pieces where they would show. They all seem to be very well hidden aside. As you can see, you know, this is the part that's going to be have detail that we'll be seeing, but all these other parts, yep, they've got the sink marks in. 
they're not going to cause them. This one might be. This looks like it might be part of like an intake. So maybe you want to sort of look at getting rid of these on them. And obviously this, this bit in the tail there looks a little bit raised there. A little bit of raised one there. I'd just scuff them down with a sanding stick just to make sure. But on the whole, they're out of the way. And they look pretty good. It's nice. It's a nice, quite, it's not hard, hard plastic, but it's, it's still quite nice. It looks like it'll, you know, be nice and strong. Should sand well if needed to. But there we go. And last but not least, we shall come to the transparencies. Okay, so here we are with our clear pieces, transparencies. What you'll notice is there are two main cockpit areas. And the reason for that is this one has got your ejection deck cord moulded in. You can see that there. This one hasn't. And there's a decal option for that. You've got these bits here, these little round bits appear to be for the front of one of the, the guided bomb, which should make sense. Obviously a little shroud, sort of your divider between tutor and the uh, student pilot. All of the various bits, wings and that, forward Obviously front canopy and then obviously more lights and things. And these bits here will be for your uh, heads up display. As you can see, they are very clear. In fact, there's virtually no distortion on that when you look through. That's very nice indeed. Even this one with the deck cord on, you'll see that better now. That's not a blemish on the thing, by the way. That's underneath. That's on the actual... There you go. To that bit there on my desk. Proves I need to do some clean up. Look at it is. Pretty micro crystal clear. It's everywhere that stuff. But yeah on the whole this is looking like it's going to uh, build up to be a nice kit. Well um, my verdict on this is a case that it looks like it's going to be a very nice kit to build up straight out of the box. I've had a look for the usual sort of things like aftermarkets and that and yeah it's there but it's for, you know, the way the kit itself's detailed. You probably don't need to be spending that much extra on it. To be fair, um, you know, there's decals for the, like I say, for the cockpit displays, which again they look quite adequate. We'll have a little peep at them. So there we go. That's round. There we go. Just took a couple of them there. Yeah, I mean, they're more than adequate. It's, um, you're not going to see a huge amount, even with the cockpits open. But on the whole, very, very nice kit. I'm actually going to do this one out of the box. I'm not going to bother with any aftermarket. Um, I think it's going to make, a, make up for a beer really nice kit. As I say, going to do it in the eggplant grey scheme, which should make it look rather fetching, similar to what's on the box art. And uh, we'll probably put loads of weapons on just for a change. Um, but yeah, Zvezda 148, Yak 130, Mitten. Um, I like it, I like what I'm seeing so far. And the other thing as well with this is it's not a ridiculously expensive kit. It's not the biggest 148 scale kit, but it's not, you know, it, it makes up that plenty, like I say, plenty of detail and you know, generally good quality. Zvezda these days, really good. Um, and it does show I'm building their all one 72nd scale MI-26 at the moment. The uh, huge Russian helicopter, the largest, obviously the largest one in the world that's in production flying. And it does show a few little bits where, you know, I've needed to put filler and, you know, fill some gaps and that. The more recent kits like the IL-76, IL-62, things like that have needed virtually nothing. So I'm hoping this being even newer, it's going to be even better. And uh, yeah, I'll be using the MRP colour range. If any of you are interested in the eggplant one, that's the colour there, which is MRP 205. That's your dark grey. Um, otherwise, you'll find that they'll probably, you'll probably get told to mix different colours together to actually do it. Say, particularly, I've got um, a Hobby Boss uh, SU34 that you can do and it's telling you oh mix this one with this one and it's like you know does somebody do the boat anyhow mrp do the job and if you've not used their pace before well recommended uh, they are a lacquer so you do need lots of ventilation and wear a mask when you're spraying them 
um, keep them away from any naked lights because you'll go boom along with the paint. Um, but if you, you know, make sure you flush through with their with their specific brush cleaner, um, and literally you just need just enough to sort of bring it up to just the level of your the bottom of your cup. Um, blast that through two three times, clears your brush through, no clogs, no nothing, and they go on absolute spectacular. So. There's my recommendation on paint as well. Right, I'm gonna get a cup of tea and uh, set to finishing off this bloody great big helicopter. Take care.